G'day guys, um, this is a bit of a, a different type of video. Uh, it's going to look at uh, some Greek organ meat food. So let's get on with it. I need to share my screen so we can actually uh, see the part of the video. Okay. This is a a site that I actually subscribe to, Grill Philosophy, it's called. And this guy and his brother um, build a lot of um, these outdoor sort of grill type um, constructions. It's very, very popular in Greece. Even, even that there, you can see the, the sort of like a sword type knife. You know, so these are all handmade. I've actually seen some of this sort of stuff um, up in the villages, in the mountain regions, some of this sort of handmade, you know, crafted um, knives and stuff like that. Yes, can be used for, yeah, the multi-purpose use, usages, so to speak. Yes, many of my ancestors used some of those implements in warfare. Anyway, let's get into it. I'll just go full screen. Πλεκτή. Έτσι ονόμαζαν οι αρχαίοι μας πρόγονοι το πλέξιμο των εντέρων γύρω από τα σουβλισμένα κομμάτια της σκοταριάς. So that was the actual ancient name, Πλεκτή, um, which means to sort of bind in a sense uh, uh, this was also mentioned in homer's um work you know people that have got a classical education the iliad um and which has to do with the trojan war and the odyssey um with um odysseus's long adventure forced by the gods to get back to his lovely Penelope. Anyway. Το αναφέρει εξάλλου και ο Όμηρος στα έργα του. Και εμείς σήμερα, οι απόγονοι των αρχαίων Ελλήνων, έτσι ακριβώς πλέκουμε τα έντερα γύρω από τα σουβλισμένα κομμάτια της σκοταριάς για να κάνουμε το παραδοσιακό μας κοκορέτσι, που είναι πολύ αγαπητό σε όλους τους Έλληνες. Yes, it is. And I can, I can attest to that. I have to say I enjoyed it quite a bit as as a youngster. We won't, we're not going to watch this whole video, obviously. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a link. So it does have um, English subtitles and it goes through and explains how to do it and all that sort of stuff. The name of my beloved friends, the Kokoretsi, is not Hellenic. It is probably from the Roman word Kokoretsu, which means Adrachte. Από εκεί μάλλον μέσω των Σέρβων έφτασε μέχρι σε εμάς όπου καθιερώθηκε σαν όνομα. Σημασία όχι όμως ότι ο τρόπος παρασκευής του είναι σχεδόν ίδιος με τον αρχαίο ελληνικό τρόπο. Anyway. So this approach has deep roots. Uh, Wikipedia sort of uh, touches a bit on on it, uh, Kokorezi, Kokorek, is a dish of the Balkans and Anatolia, Asia Minor, consisting of lamb or goat intestines wrapped around seasonal off seasoned offal, including sweetbreads, heart, lungs, or kidneys, and typically grilled. A variety of consistent consists of chopped innards cooked in on a grill, the intestines of suckling lambs are preferred. And they talk a bit here about the, the dish identified to the modern quality is first attested in the cuisine of the, of the Byzantines. But as that guy mentioned, there is connections and yeah, it's not very up to date. Obviously, you know, um, 
there are differences. This um, uh, Greek linguist um, believes that it originated from uh, Kukorek um, Albanian. So there's a whole lot of different people having different opinions on on its on the modern the modern name of it, um, you know. But you know, it doesn't really matter. It does have ancient roots. Um, a lot of the populations that came to the region were influenced by Greek, both ancient Greek cuisine and Byzantine. Um, cuisine. So when the Slavs came into the region, they were, you know, converted to orthodoxy. They adopted a lot of their cuisine of the Greeks and made their own adaptations and the variations. The Turks did the same thing. They did their own variations. It's, um, this, while being popular in Greece, is also quite popular in Turkey as well. So there's a Turkish um, in Izmir, Smyrni, hooking up some kokoretsi. And so when it's cooked and you cut it, these are the pieces. That's sort of a, a possibly oregano. Um, it depends. Some, you know, like that other guy, he actually does it with salt and pepper. Um, some Greeks you know these are sort of modern things variations where they're now they're putting them in, in pita breads and all sorts of things so you know but that's how you do it and this is usually like um greek orthodox easter you do it um you have the, have the lamb or the organ meats going on at the same time um so both are cooked and both are appreciated from the region that i come in from on the west coast it's like a daily thing. People will consume this nearly on a daily on a daily basis. Some will consume it every couple of days now and then. So it's I see it as the ultimate multivitamin that somebody has every day without having to go and buy vitamin supplements. I, I suspect this is a much better source in that regard. Obviously, people. Are, you know, in the modern world are eating also carbohydrates and all that. And so the requirements for certain vitamins and minerals and so all of that goes up. So these foods have some value to, you know, when people are eating a lot of foods with anti-nutrients. Obviously, if you're on a carnivore diet, the requirements for organ meats go down. So, you know, our requirements for thiamine drops to half and a lot of other things do reduce because the requirements for as cofactors in enzymatic processes are reduced quite a bit. Carbohydrates use far more. So they're the only one, um, there, there are some exceptions to that, like riboflavin and a few others, but generally speaking, um, carbohydrate metabolism actually tends to use more of these. But we'll go into the, det into the details beyond that. So that's somewhere in Turkey as well, I think. So it's quite popular um, in Greece and Turkey in particular. It is in the Balkans, in other areas, Romania, Ser um, Serbo Serbia, Croatia, Bulgaria, um, and Albania. But th probably the two um, places where it's extremely popular is in Greece and on the West Coast in particular. And remember that the, most of the people living on the West Coast of Turkey uh, are Muslims who who really have, if they go back or check their genetics, they do have Greek ancestry. So, you know, they've just basically have been forced assimilation that happened under the Ottomans, where a lot of people were forced to convert both religiously and linguistically and culturally. So... They're, you know, you're either ethnically cleansed or you're assimilated by force. And so over many generations, even even um, Erdogan's family comes from the uh, a region, Bordos, and I, I, would, I would bet my bottom dollar that he's got a lot of Greek ancestry in him. And even he's sort, other people have alluded to that, that from the region that he comes. 
So, I mean, anyway, but uh, that's the story of that sort of history. It's a very dark history for another day to go into. But uh, that's why it is very popular in both the Greek world and the Turkish world, this sort of thing. Now, let's look at the composition. We'll ignore the little olive oil down here. So it's got about... They talk about the ingredients in there. So 15 point. So this is for... If you cut all the all the organs of the lamb into, and you mix them up, and then you skewer them. So remember, this guy is cutting up all the organs, seasoning them with with salt and pepper. And then putting them on the skewer. And then finally, after all that um, sort of sweet breads that are basically wrapped around, and then you pretty much go up and down, up and down. And once you've gone up and down, then you go around and around and around. And it ends up looking more and more like that. And eventually when you've wrapped enough, it ends up. So as you can see with all that intestine, there's a lot of collagen there, <laughs> quite a lot of collagen, rich collagen amino acids as well with the organ meats. So then you just put it on over the coal, cook it up. As you can see, I'll, I'll put a link for all these this sort of stuff anyway. There it is, nice and roasted. And then they'll cut it up like this, slice it up. And normally you have a couple of, in a small little plate, you have a couple of slices um, with a drink or something like that. Traditionally, well, on in most parts of Greece, that's what they do. But as you can see, you know, when we look at 85 grams, which is three ounces, as an example, they usually call it three servings, um, like one ounce per serving, which is a couple of a, a couple of slices. Um, that most people will have. But even if, you know, you want to have like every day, you want to have like three ounces of this sort of stuff. As you can see, you're only getting about 67% of vitamin A. You're not going to get into over vitaminosis. Like if you were just to eat massive amounts of liver, there's a potential risk and there's no need to consume that amount. Also, you'd get excessive levels of copper as well. So humans did not do that. You even look at the tribal people. They cut, cut smaller bits of uh, liver and it just it, feed it amongst themselves as a multivitamin. They're not eating massive amounts. That's not the, the way people used to have. And if they had um, like liver, they'd have occasional. Now, some populations can tolerate it better because they may have done it like the Irish with cod liver oil and cod liver and, and liver where they consume because they've got very poor beta carotene conversion. So there are some people that can tolerate um, far more, but, you know, large parts of the population may not. So it's always best to stick within, as I said, the around the 3000 I use for the majority of population. Um, occasionally, uh, sort of the, my sort of limit is no more than 10,000 I use. I usually stick to around about 5,000 with the eggs and, and the occasional organs that I may have here or there 
or stuff like that. I haven't had organs for a while. It's usually from other sources that I'm getting most of my, from dairy fat and stuff like that, that I'm getting most of my retinol nowadays, eggs and dairy. So, I mean, even at 67%, that's 2,000 I use year away in the, you get 20% uh, vitamin C, which is probably on a carnival diet, definitely quite a quite a bit. Um, you don't really need that amount, um, but you know. So it's neither here or there. I wouldn't be too concerned in that regard. It's not like massive, and this is the sort of what you're getting. You know, about fifteen grams. So when you cut all the organs up from a lamb. These are the sort of things you're going to end up getting the combinations. So you've got about, you'll end up getting about 15.12 grams of heart, 15 odd grams of lungs, 23 grams of spleen, 13 grams um, of liver, six. Um, Lambs of testes, chitterlings, tin, and then they just add salt. That other guy had pepper. Some people do um, salt and oregano. They'll put a bit of oregano, just sprinkle a bit on. Um, so depends how you want it. Now, this olive oil is not required, obviously. Now... Why would they have olive oil here? Some people will actually, to get a sort of a, the the outer part, that collagen part, to give it to give it a, a stronger crackling sort of effect, they will actually put on either olive oil. They'll just on their hands and just wipe it down with olive oil, or they'll use butter and they'll just wipe it down with butter. In that regard just so it can give it that sort of golden colour and stuff like that. That's optional. I mean, obviously, as carnivals, we would use butter for that purpose, not all, not olive oil. But, you know, that's the sort of the technique. And as you can see, you're getting a good level of cholesterol, which is good. Not too bad in, um, in the saturates. Um, Considering you, you, we lose, we excrete 192 milligrams per day of uh, potassium. You're, yeah, um, you're getting a, not a bad amount there. Um, carbohydrates, you're getting bugger all. That's just normal. And you're still getting about 20 grams of protein, which is good. So we're still getting a bit of... Um, so that's... Fairly key. So, if we were to look at that, twenty grams, divide that by eighty-five, which is three ounces, it's about twenty-three and a half percent, which isn't too bad. I mean, anything over twenty is good. Um, we would like to be a bit higher, but you know, obviously, if you were to use more heart, like get the organs of an animal and then buy an extra heart, you'd probably end up with slightly more protein. Um, so you can alter slightly these numbers. These numbers are coming from one single animal. So you're cutting up all the whole animal and then you basically, um, you'll divvy, you'll break that up into, into servings. So that's the sort of, that's the sort of information that's a, um, that's what it's called, kukurezi. Um, It's a traditional food of org organ um, meats that uh, are quite popular in Greece. People are probably, in in my region, in the old days, they were consuming about at least a third, um, you know, about a, an ounce or two. Which pretty much pretty much means they were getting at least about a thousand to two thousand IU's um, of vitamin A every day 
for many years upon years. Plus, if you add up all the others, they'll probably very easily getting. I've actually done the calculations, and very easily, um, people from my region were getting about, um, you know, five thousand IUs. That old man that was doing the, that I've done the vitamin A video was up to nearly seven thousand IUs per day for decades. So. As long as you've got a healthy liver and all that, I do not recommend these sort of foods when people are deranged, have poor liver function, cirrhosis of the liver and stuff like that. I prefer people fix that first, fix the liver, you know, and then once you've healed the liver, then the liver can store, you know, a vast, quite a lot of the um, retinol if it's healthy. You know, but if it's not healthy, very problematic. So that's where a lot of the problems lie, that people are encouraged to consume certain things. But see, the body doesn't like um, having things floating around in the body. That means, you know, it doesn't like having vitamin D floating around. It doesn't like having too many lipids floating around. It doesn't like having too much glucose um, flying around. You know, there is a certain amount that should be in transit from storage or from food that goes into cells to provide the nutrients. Otherwise, it should be either stored away or excreted. That's how the body works. It doesn't like having too much in the bloodstream. It creates too many problems. And that's why it tries to eliminate in many cases, any excess through bile. Vitamin A is actually primarily um, excreted through bile if it's um, there's too much and it's having, you know, there's not enough storage capacity. But the problem is most people that do have liver problems also have gallbladder issues. So you can understand how these people can, can't tolerate as much. And so this is not for people that are unhealthy, this food. Okay, this is for healthy people that have good functioning livers, good functioning organs that can actually deal with, um, you know, with retinol and whatever else. So that keep that in mind. This is like a multivitamin every day. Having a food like this, you can literally cook all these organs up, cook them up, cut them up, put them in little bags, freeze them or whatever, and have them have them occasionally. Take them out warm them up and have them occasionally as a multivitamin. Um, obviously, if you do refrigerate them, you will lose most of the vitamin C, but you're still getting vitamin C from other meats and stuff like that. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. But, you know, if you want to do it every week, you could put them in, put them in the fridge. That won't really affect that part as much. It's usually freezing that eliminates most of it. And... You know, or you can always opt for the other option, which some people do, is have them occasionally here and there, um, cook them up when, you know. So I'll leave that up to up to people. I'll provide all the links and information so they, they can see how to do it, how to put it together. That video is quite educational. It goes right through and shows in detail every single step. So... It's uh, quite informative, you know. So why waste, as I said, stop wasting money on all these organ supplements and stuff like that. Get the real stuff. Get the real stuff. Do it yourself. Cook it up. And it tastes a hell of a lot nicer when you do it the right way, that traditional way. And, you know, it's nothing like organ meats wrapped up and barbecued. Absolutely um, fantastic the taste problem is people are cooking them in ways because they're just ignorant just ignorant you know we've lost a lot of the food culture that we once upon a time had so this stuff isn't gonna if you were to eat this every day like 85 grams three three ounces every single day as you can see you're not going to get into any hypervitaminosis or any issue whatsoever not that I'm encouraging people to do um, anything. I'm just saying that I know a lot of my ancestors did that. Now, obviously, 
you may say, well, Harry, my ancestors didn't, my genetics, but occasionally I may want to try it and check it out. And that's all I'm saying. I'm not, there's no, you know, proviso here or say you must or whatever. That's your, you know, your body, your choice, um, what you put in it in that regard. All I'm saying is that uh, there are other ways of preparing organ organ meats and stuff like that. Um, that can be quite nutrient dense. And obviously, you know, for growing young young people that may have an aversion, that probably need more compared to people that are no longer growing, probably need more of these nutrients, pregnant women and people like that. This food is much safer than a lot of the other potential risque type, you know, man-made vitamins. You know, this would be a hell of a lot healthier for a pregnant woman to eat. And she, I think she would enjoy this far more than something that came out of a pill. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. See yous.